Hey guys, welcome back to part four of the Outdoor Shower series. If you missed the previous three parts, I'll put a card up on the screen and links in the description below where you can go back and check those out and bring you up to speed of where we are today. So today's video is going to cover the deck framing. I'm going to show you some tips and techniques on how I did this. If you have any questions about things that I show you, post them down below. I'll try to answer them all the best that I can. I hope you guys enjoy this video, and as always, thanks for watching. All right, guys, so before we get started, this is how you traditionally frame a deck, okay? You put a post in the ground that is obviously a footer. It's got concrete around it, or maybe there's a sono tube, and that's attached to it. You then put your beam right on top of the post, and then you frame your joist over the top of the beam. So there's one there, and there's another beam down over there. All right, that way you have constant point load right down to the footing, okay? You're not depending on essentially fasteners to hold the deck up, okay? Because everything is just sitting on top of itself. I'm not going to be doing that out here only because that's a lot more work. We're dealing with a little area here, the small platform. And what I'm going to be doing to extend the deck out is just frame it with two by sixes to match the existing joists. And I'm going to attach a 2x6 between these two posts here with carriage bolts. And there's going to be another one back there between those two posts. And then we'll fill in the joist with joist hangers. Again, that's not really acceptable when you're building a larger deck because, again, you're depending on fasteners, in this case the carriage bolts, to carry the weight. So for a small span like this, not that much of a load on here. It's going to work out just fine, so I'm not too worried about that. All right, so to start the framing off here, I'm going to first put in this essentially is going to be our joist that's going to carry the other joist we're going to put it from the outside edge of the existing deck out to the outside edge of this post so i got to get a measurement of that and it uh, looks like i'm at 40 40 and 3 8 so we'll cut that and put it into place good place to start because we could set our level off the ground right here if we flush this new joist up to this one We'll just level it out to this post here, and then we'll be able to frame around right to the other side. All right, so I went ahead and cut both these joists that connect the posts, and they're both the same exact measurement, so I guess we did a good job setting our posts in the cement. All right, so to attach these, you want to take a look at the crown on the wood, and you see how this is its cupped like that, it's like a half moon. We want to put it so that cup where the inside of that is up against the post. Okay, right like that. I'm going to set my height on this end, make sure the top of this is flush. You're never concerned about the bottom when building a deck. You just want the top to be flush. You're not building fine furniture here, you know, you just got to get it close. And what I usually like to do is I'll take some clamps, I'll clamp it in place so I know exactly where I got to be. That way it won't move when we're putting our fasteners in. Alright, so I got that perfect on this side. I'm just going to level this thing out now, bring it exactly where we need it, get my bubble between the lines. Get it close for now because we can always just tap it with the hammer once we get it in place. And we'll throw a clamp in on this side as well. The clamp underneath, it helps hold it in place. The way I like to check it is just take your hammer and run it right across the top there. And if it slides back and forth without getting hung up, you're perfect. Alright guys, so before we go ahead and drill the holes, for the leg bolts. What I like to do is just take a couple deck screws, exterior screws, and drive them into the post. That way this thing won't move around on you when you're hogging out that hole. So you don't have to go too nuts, just put them in. You can actually leave these in there, you don't even need to take them out. So I take a speed square. You want these to be obviously in the middle of your post. Your post is three and a half. So you're looking at an inch and three quarters where you want to drill these holes. I take my speed square and I'll just scribe a line on there. Same thing on this post, right in the middle of the post and an inch and a half down and an inch and a half up. That's where I'm going to be locating these things. Should be able to poke through with this. 3 8 inch uh, butterfly bit or speed bit, whatever the hell you want to call this thing. And main thing here is you just want to hold this thing as level as possible and drill on through and straight obviously so. all right guys we have a change of plans for now only because those carriage bolts i bought were in the wrong bin at home depot i need six inch carriage bolts and those are five they're not going to make it through that so again building this in the coronavirus era 
and the line is wrapped around the building right now at Home Depot. So that's gonna have to wait till tomorrow. We'll just temporarily get everything secured today. So obviously, like I said, we're gonna be running the joists out this way because the deck boards are gonna sit in here like this. So we have a little bit of a problem here. Normally, like the other side, I'd mount the, I guess if you want to call it like a pseudo rim joist on the outside here and run my joist into that with hangers. But obviously with these posts up against the house, I'm not gonna be able to get that um, rim joist on the outside here or in the inside of this post, depending on how you're looking at it. Uh, but it's no big deal, it's not the end of the world. Normally when you're building a deck up against the house, you put a ledger board on here, cut the siding away, and the ledger board gets attached to the framing of the house, and that is your support for your joist hangers. But I didn't want this thing attached to the house. I wanted it to be freestanding. To do that, what I did was I made this up real quick in the uh, shop. And basically what this is going to do, this will get carriage bolted onto the posts like that. And then on the inside of these posts, so I'm going to put some joist hangers. So these guys are going to sit in here. So in other words, these are going to sit on the, the end of this one like this. And we'll get those mounted in there like that. And then this thing's going to be rock solid to support our joist. So this isn't anything more than, as you can probably see on camera, 2x6, 2x6, this one on the inside is cut to fit in between the two posts, uh, minus like an eighth of an inch to accommodate the hangers. And then I just cut some blocks in between here to give it a little more support, use deck screws to screw it all together, and a nice little beam that'll carry the load on this side. These are called concealed joist hangers. These are usually put on the edges of your framing. Um, I don't have one out here because you can't wrap a traditional joist hanger around the outside of the post. Alright, so I gotta come down this side. Looks like right there. Yeah, it's on a how well you can see this here, but I slip the hanger in and the scribe underneath it. And that'll give me my height. Move this whole assembly and we'll nail that thing in. Same thing on this side. We'll put that in there. Describe it, pull out the beam, drive the nails in. Right. Inch and a half nails holding these hangers in place. These are made by Simpson, and the nails are by Simpson also. Alright guys, here's the finished product. Everything looking good. Nice and level over here. Happy with that. Only issue I'm going to have is getting nails into these joist hangers into the actual joist. So I'm probably just going to have to tow this in up top here. But uh, don't forget, these are going to be carriage bolted to the posts as well on the front here. So this is going to be plenty strong. And the back of this is really only support to put the picture frame boards for the deck back in here. Alright guys, it's the next day. I decided to take the rest of yesterday off only because uh, kids wanted to go out and like I said, I didn't have the hardware and I wasn't waiting on line for 10 years at Home Depot. So, got my 6 inch carriage bolts so we can get this done this morning. Off camera I took the rim joist off here and I added a joist hanger here just to tie this a little bit better into the existing deck. Good time to do that. I had to take like a, a 16th of an inch off the end here to line it back up on the edge. And uh, that looks really good. Ironically, I went over to Lowe's to get those carriage bolts yesterday afternoon, and they don't have a social distancing guideline, I guess, in terms of making you wait outside. They just allow you to free will come walk in and out of the store like it's normal times, which to me is fantastic. I don't, I don't want to wait outside to get something that takes me two seconds, you know. Hopefully this crap is ending soon. We'll get back to normal. All right, so now I could chase out this hole again because it might. Also be... got myself a longer spade bit to get these holes drilled through without having to go to the other side. And I know these these bits are impact graded, but yesterday when I hogged that one hole out, it drained the battery down real quick. Five amp hour battery. I don't know why. So I'm just going to switch over to the regular drill now. 
see how this goes through. Again, try to keep your drill perpendicular as best as you can to the, the post. Yeah, I don't know. The drill works a lot better than the impact driver to go through. So it's funny, over at Lowe's, they're actually almost out of these uh, carriage bolts also. I don't know, maybe everyone's quarantine project is building decks right now, but they had real low stock on this stuff. Uh, I got just enough to get this section done. like to buy a few more just to have them but you know if you change uh, your design on the fly but can't be done they didn't have any more all right so obviously carriage bolt washer and nut hold all this stuff in place all galvanized so it doesn't uh, corrode and rust Trying to beat the rain here today. It's supposed to pour in a little bit. Early start. Wake the neighbors up. <laughs> and just tighten up the backside. I don't remember if I mentioned it yesterday or not. Uh, I know that using carriage bolts is kind of the old school way of doing this. They have those screws now I think they're called thread lock or headlock or something like that that you could use and they take the place of using carriage bolts but I'm cheap guys I don't want to spend 40 45 dollars for a box of screws that's ridiculous if they want to that to be like the uh, the new wave you got to lower the price of those things 40 bucks for I don't know 20 screws or whatever the hell that is that's crazy plus instead of using two two carriage bolts you have to use three of those on a connection like this so I don't know you do what you want if those things ever drop down in price I'll probably switch over to them just because they're easy you don't have to drill a pilot hole and all that jazz but not now I'm not ready for that this tape measure sucks inch and a half and four and a quarter we want Speed square here. Let's square all this up. guys that's all attached uh, this was not any fun getting my hand back in here threading those nuts on especially this one over here because you got the corner of the siding that eats up a little bit more real estate to get your hands down in there so I had to cut the end of the carriage bolts off in order to be able to thread on those nuts on the back just make sure if you do that you uh, give it a little coat of paint to give it protection again from rust and corrosion but so if you did everything right up to this point there shouldn't be any issues with getting this last board in level because all you're really doing is just connecting the, the two points together. Got it clamped in place temporarily, gonna secure it to the posts, and I'm gonna finish this one up with some corner brackets in here to give it a little extra strength. Got to put the camera back on here to bring you guys up to speed so next step after everything was secured I went ahead and added some corner brackets in here as well to the inside over here and over here to strengthen everything up uh, deck joist 16 inches on center just like your traditional house framing I'm gonna come back after these are in I'm probably gonna have to add some blocking in between these because uh, like I originally stated if you can look over here I got perimeter deck boards that go around the entire deck and you have to put perpendicular framing in to support those and be able to have something to screw into. So I'm going to have to add some blocking around the edges of that to continue the 
perimeter boards out here, the picture frame boards. I'm going to get these in first. These are 16 inches on center again. Then you just got to get your length, so you measure in between your two tick marks. And in my case, I had yeah, roughly 44 and a quarter. I always like to make them a hair bigger, maybe like a 16th to an eighth. A little less than an eighth. That way they fit in there and they stay uh, as you're screwing them. You're not fighting trying to hold them in place. Just don't make them too big because then you'll start bowing out your, your rim joints. So that's really it. I'm going to secure these with some screws on the outside. Then I'm going to come back and put joist hangers on. Make sure you hold it in place when you're doing it. And you can see just by oversizing this slightly, everything stays in place when we're driving the screws and it's not fighting us. That looks good. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side over there. I can't get to the back side, obviously, so I'm just going to have to tow those screws in. All right, so for these, you just slip them around the bottom. You got this little tab here. You essentially pound those in like that, and that holds it there before you start the nails. A little bit of a trick sometimes not hitting your fingers as you're doing that. But. So once you have those tabs pushed in, the thing kind of sits there by itself. You can finish up with your nails. Now with these, inch, inch and a half nails into the rim joist, then you need to switch over to, I believe they're three inch nails that go through these holes on the side, through your joist into the rim joist. These nails go through these little holes in the side here. So as I'm installing these joist hangers, guys, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Also give that notification bell a tap. That way you never miss when I post a new video. If you're finding this informative, tap that like button as well. It goes a long way to helping my channel, and I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. guys and there you have it nice secure connection should be able to walk up on these things now shouldn't feel anything wobbling and they just got to keep going along so I only have one left to put in but if you're building a full-size deck and you got another 30 of these to do you keep doing the same exact way just keep taking your measurements making sure everything is square and the same on both ends put your hangers in drive your nails Get some exercise. I'm gonna put the last one in off camera. I don't think you need to see any more of this. And then our platform will be all done. All right, before I cut the camera off here for this one, I thought something was noteworthy that I should mention. When you're installing these joists, you wanna look for something called a crown. And what a crown essentially is, and every board has one, is when you're looking down the side of the board here, you'll see it either taper up in the middle or it'll taper down in the middle. You always wanna find that crown and make sure that the taper is facing up. So you want the higher part to be in the middle rather than it being dipping down in the middle. And the reason for that is when you install these, the idea is that over time, the weight of the deck will push those crowns down and make everything flat. Now, you don't wanna be using lumber that is completely at a square and has real big dips and waves in it. You're just looking for that slight crown that might be in these things and you wanna put that up. So I'm looking at this piece right now and it is ever so slight, you're not even going to see it on camera, this is the side that's crowned. So it's basically, like I said, if you're looking at this, it's lower here, it's a little higher in the middle, and it's lower at the end. This, of course, uh, depends on where you cut the piece of wood out of the original piece that you bought, but put all your crowns so they're in the middle and they're up. Real important when you're building decks to do that to make sure everything is flat and level when you're done. So rain kind of put a damper on the rest of the day here. I did manage to set an umbrella up over here and finish up. So this will be wrapping up the framing here, I'll give you guys an overview. I added in this 2x6 on the end here and that's to complete the original deck framing. If you remember, I took out a couple boards here and that was to restructure the end of this here that wasn't originally done correctly to better support the posts I put in for the privacy screen that's going to go in this area and also to extend the deck back out 
to accommodate for the picture frame boards that go around the outside of the deck. So those sit in here. You can see those kind of jog into the pump out of the house here and over to here to complete this section. All right, so that's done. Some carriage bolts here into the new post. Those go straight through into the existing framing of the deck to tie everything together. Over here, I added a joist hanger to, to complete this end of it. And this is all done. You can see I finished up the joist and everything's looking really good, nice and solid. Real happy with the way this all came out. Corner brackets, I'm not sure if I showed that earlier. Those have been put in on all four corners. Everything's all nice and tight and secure. Took a trip up to Lowe's before during the rain. And I'm not able to match up these deck boards anymore, but I found something that is you know, kind of close. This is a little bit lighter than the existing boards. This was a brand called Choice Deck. Lowe's doesn't carry that anymore. I don't even know if they're in business anymore. The new boards are Trex branded boards. And, um, you know, they're a little bit lighter than the existing deck, but this is the other alternative. That's way too dark. And I think that these will probably blend in a little better when we're done. But that'll be the next video of the series installing the deck boards in here. I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to get that done. So that about wraps up this one. Hope you found it helpful. Maybe you could pull a thing or two from it. Even if you're not building an outdoor shower, maybe you want to build a bump out on your deck for a barbecue or something. You could do something very similar to what I did here. So thanks for watching. Any questions, comments, put them down below. Give it a like button to tap and check the links in the description for items I used in the video today if you want to purchase them. See you guys on the next one.